Hey, it's Yay for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how to crochet the Watercolor Skies Corner to Corner Rainbow Moss Stitch Afghan. So I'm using Red Heart Super Saver for this project. These are all the colors I'm going to be using. Um, the exact amounts and everything will be in the written pattern available on my blog. You can see the link in the description box below. So I'm using dusty gray as my main color. Then I have white. And then for the pastel rainbow I've got going here, I've got flamingo, lemon, aruba sea, minty, and orchid. You'll also need a size I crochet hook. This is a Furls Odyssey. And some scissors, um, a yarn needle to weave in your ends, and a ruler for measuring your gauge. So I've got my crochet hook and we're gonna start with our dusty gray. And what we're gonna do is leave about a six inch tail and we're gonna start by chaining three, just like that. So now we're gonna work our very first row and the entire row is worked into this third chain from the hook. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip the first two chains and those two chains are going to count as one stitch or one half double crochet equivalent. So I'm going to work into this third chain from the hook, a single crochet, chain one, single crochet, and a half double crochet all in that little space. And pull on the tail just a little bit to close up the hole. So that should be a total of five stitches because we're counting the two chains at the beginning of the round, our beginning chain space, if you will, as one stitch. And we're counting the um, chain one that we did in the middle of the row as one stitch. So now we're going to chain two and turn. This is the second row. We're gonna single crochet in the same stitch that the, the chain space or the two chains are coming out of. Then we're going to chain one skip this next single crochet and we're going to work a single crochet in the chain one space. Then we're going to chain one again, skip the next single crochet, and then we're going to work into the top of this beginning chain space from the row below, a single crochet and a half double crochet. So those are our first two rows and now we're going to work row three, which is the row that we're going to be repeating for most of the rows in the whole first half of the blanket. So what we're gonna do is chain two and turn. We're gonna work a single crochet in the same stitch. Then we're going to chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next chain space, and repeat that little sequence until we get to two stitches left in the row. So up to the last two stitches. So chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next chain space. So all I have left now is two stitches. I'm going to chain one, skip one, and work a single crochet and a half double crochet into the top of the beginning chain space from the row below. So that's my third row. So we're going to repeat this third row until we have a total of six rows. So for rows three to six, they're gonna be exactly the same. So again, we're gonna chain two and turn, single crochet in the same stitch, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next chain space, chain one, skip one, and single crochet in the next chain space all the way across till we have two stitches left in the row, chain one, skip one, and work a single crochet and a half double crochet in the top of the beginning chain space from the row below. So that was row four. We're gonna chain two and turn again, single crochet in the same stitch, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next chain space, all the way across until we have two stitches left. Chain one, skip one, single crochet and half double crochet into that beginning chain space. And then we're gonna work it one more time because that was only row five. So we're gonna do row six, chain two and turn, single crochet in the same stitch, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next chain space all the way across till we have two stitches left in the row. Chain one, skip one, 
and work a single crochet and a half double crochet into that chain space. So that is the beginnings of our little triangle. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add in our first color. So here's our first color. It's the flamingo colorway. And we are going to now add this flamingo color and work the next row in this color. So I'm going to join this yarn by just grabbing it with my hook and we're going to do the chain two. So I'm going to join this yarn by just grabbing it with my hook and pulling it through the current loop. Then I'm going to pull on the gray yarn until that loop disappears. And what we're going to do is lay this down and take the pink flamingo tail and the gray yarn and tie them together in a knot so that the uh, gray loop that we pulled our, our flamingo yarn through has disappeared down into the top of that stitch and we can now work with this flamingo color. Now this next row is going to be a single row stripe and I'm calling it the cluster row because it's worked with cluster stitches instead of single crochets. So we're going to be working across this direction with the flamingo and then we're going to work the next row in gray. Only problem is if we work across this way with the flamingo the gray yarn is still attached over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to crochet over the gray yarn as we work in this direction so that when we finish our single row with the flamingo the gray yarn will be at the correct edge so that we can pick it up and keep working with it. So to do that I am going to chain two and turn. This is our cluster row and it's basically identical to that row three that we've been repeating except we're replacing all the single crochets with a cluster stitch, a single crochet cluster. So I'm going to work the cluster stitch into the same stitch that my chain is coming out of. So I'm going to insert into that stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, just like a regular single crochet. Then I'm going to yarn over, insert into the st same stitch we were just in again, and then pull up another loop. So we've got one, two, three loops, four loops actually over here because we're counting um, the one that was already on the hook originally. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through all those stitches. And as we go along, of course, we're going to crochet over the gray yarn. So now I'm going to chain one, skip one, and work a cluster stitch into the next chain space. So we insert into the space, pull up a loop just like a single crochet, then yarn over, insert into that space again, and pull up a loop just like a single crochet, yarn over and pull through all the loops. So again, chain one, skip one, insert into the next chain space, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert into the same space again, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through all of the loops. So that is our cluster stitch, and we're going to keep doing that little sequence of chain one, skip one, cluster in the next chain space till we have two stitches left in the row. So here's the last one. We have two stitches left. We're gonna chain one, skip one, and work a cluster stitch and a half double crochet into that beginning chain space from the row below. So that is our cluster row. So I am now going to kind of back my hook up through that last half double crochet till I've got um, the three loops on the hook. So normally to finish the half double crochet, as I had just done a minute ago, I would pull through all those three loops, but instead I'm going to pull through those three loops with the gray. So now we're going to work several rows in the gray, and we want to make sure that our flamingo yarn is still in the, the correct place when we go to pick it up again the next time to work another stripe. So what we're going to do is carry it up the edge by twisting it together with the working yarn each time we come back to this edge. So what we're going to do is twist the two yarns together, kind of like that, and then we're going to work the first chain, then we're going to twist them back the other direction to work the second chain as we go to work the next row, and then when we turn, 
we want to make sure that our flamingo yarn remains on that edge and it just kind of hangs there until we come back to it. So now we're going to be repeating row three again, single crochet in the same stitch, chain one, skip one, and single crochet in the next chain space. But because we carried that gray yarn in the last row and we worked over top of it, as we insert into the chain spaces on this row, I'm also inserting under that carried strand of gray. And this will help secure it even better and keep it out of the way so that it is less noticeable. And as we get back to the um, other end of the row, of course, we're gonna work our single crochet and our half double crochet into the top of the beginning chain space. And then we're gonna turn and work back the other direction and repeat row three again. But this time we don't have to worry about picking up any um, strand that was carried in the previous row because there was no carried strand. And as we work this last half double crochet, I am going to twist the yarns together to carry the pink one up. Again, we're still only working with the gray. So twist again on that first chain, twist back the other direction on the second one. Then we're going to leave that flamingo yarn hanging and work across the next row. And we're again just repeating row three. So that is my third time repeating row three. I'm going to repeat it one more time and end up back on the other edge where the, the flamingo yarn is being carried. And as we work this last half double crochet at the end of the row, I'm going to pick up the, the flamingo yarn and pull it through the last um, pull through of the stitch. So instead of pulling through the last time with the gray, I pulled it through with the pink. Now we're going to twist the yarns again, and this time we're only going to be working with the pink. And we're going to repeat row three two times with this flamingo pink. So here we are back at the other edge. And as I finish that last half double crochet, I want to twist the yarn but we are going to pull through with the pink and now we're going to join our white. So we're going to work this cluster row that we did down here in the pink up here in the white. So I'm gonna join the white the same way I joined the pink initially. So I'm going to just pull the white through the current loop on the hook and then pull on that pink loop until it kind of disappears and tie the pink yarn together with the white yarn tail in a double knot. So again, as we work our single cluster row, we're gonna be working it with the white, but we are going to pick up the pink when we're finished with this white row. So we need the pink to end up on the opposite edge so we can pick it back up. So we're going to carry the pink across as we work this row. So I am going to turn bringing this pink yarn and laying it over the top of my row so that I can crochet over it. Then to do the cluster row again, we're going to chain two, work a cluster, single crochet in the same stitch, chain one, skip one, single crochet, cluster, into the next chain space, chain one, skip one, cluster in the next chain space all the way across till we have two stitches left in the row. And as we get to the end, chain one, skip one, and then work the cluster and half double crochet in that same stitch. Only when we finish that half double crochet, we're going to pull through the final time with the pink and what we're gonna do, because the next time we use the white is gonna be a ways up and it's a little bit bulkier to carry two colors at the same time, we're going to cut the white yarn right here and we're going to tie the tail together with the current working yarn, which is the pink, the flamingo. So now I'm going to work row three two more times in the flamingo to mirror the other side of the what's on the other side of the cluster stripe 
And just as we did the last time we carried a yarn strand across a row, every time we go into a chain space, we're going to pick up that um, flamingo yarn that was carried across and work through it as well as the chain space. And as I work that last half double crochet, again, I'm going to twist together with the gray to carry it up the edge. And as I work my first two chains of the next row, I'm also going to twist together with the gray. But what we're gonna do is we're going to work a second row of the flamingo. And then we're going to work more rows in the gray. So again, we want the gray to end up over here because we're gonna work back across this way and then we're gonna to switch to gray. So we're going to carry the gray yarn across this row as we work it. It's still the same row three that we've been repeating. So I'm going to twist the yarns again and chain two. We don't wanna twist it on the second chain because we want the gray yarn to lay um, level with the row we're working into. And just repeat row three again carrying that gray yarn across and working over it. So here we are at the other end. And as I work that last half double crochet, I'm gonna pull through the final time with the gray, because we're now switching back to gray. And we're gonna be carrying the flamingo yarn up the edge of the gray as we have done before. And on this following row, as usual, when we carry a yarn across, we are going to be working the row with the gray and crocheting as we go into the chain spaces, we're also gonna pick up that gray carried yarn. And that, this is why we do it, because as you can see right here, it kind of peeps through sometimes. So as we work this next gray row, we're going to be picking up those carried strands as we go across. So we're going to continue to twist the flamingo yarn as we go up this edge and work row three as normal, but we're going to be picking up those carried strands of gray. It's a single strand that runs all the way across. So there is our first gray row. I'm gonna repeat that same row, which is of course row three, three more times for a total of four rows so we can match this gray stripe down here. So that is the end of my fourth gray row. I'm now going to switch back to the flamingo by pulling it through at the end of that last half double crochet. And we're going to repeat this cluster row down here. And of course to do that, we're gonna need to carry the gray across because it needs to end up over here so we can work the next sequence of stripes. So again, as I do this, I'm going to just, it's the same as row three, we're just replacing all the single crochets with a cluster. So chain two and turn, cluster in the same stitch, and then chain one, skip one, cluster in the next chain space until we get to the last two stitches in the row. So here we are working into the last stitch and we're going to pull through that last half double crochet in the gray because the next rows are gonna be worked in gray and also because this is the last row that we're gonna be working in the flamingo for quite a while. So we're just going to cut that yarn and leave a tail. And then we are going to tie it together with the working yarn, just to make sure that it is going to stay put and not kind of loosen up um, the edge of the work at the end of that row. So for the last section of our stripe sequence, we're going to work six more rows of gray to mirror this part down here. So we're just going to repeat row three for the next six rows. So that is the end of our first stripe sequence. And so we are now going to switch our contrast color. Um, in the pattern, you'll see that our main color is the gray, we have white, and then each of our rainbow colors is a contrast color in the pattern. 
So um, you're just going to repeat the same instructions from row 7 to row 27, but every time it says contrast color, you're going to be using the next color, which is our lemon. So I'm going to join the lemon yarn and repeat rows 7 through 27. All right, so I have finished my um, first batch of repeats here. I've got, this is my corner, I've got the first row 7 to 27. Then I changed to the lemon as my contrast color and did row 7 to 27. Here's minty as the contrast color, row 7 to 27. Same with the Aruba Sea and the Orchid. So now what we're going to do is continue repeating this color sequence. So now I'm going to switch to the Flamingo again and do row 7 to 27. I'm going to go to the Lemon 7 to 27, the Minty and do 7 to 27, etc, etc. But when I get to the Orchid, I'm only going to work rows 7 to 24. And that's because that's the point that we're going to stop and then make the blanket come back you know, to a point, start to decrease back to that other corner to make it into a square. So the size of the blanket is going to be measured at this point from the original corner all along the current straight edge until um, the other, you know, one, along one of the straight square edges. Um, the stripes are going to be going on the bias, but the length of one of the square edges is going to be um, the current length of the um, blanket or the width or whatever, both directions, it'll be the same. So if you want to make this smaller, then just keep repeating um, 7 to 27 until if you measure from the corner along one straight edge to the end of the row that you're working on, um, that's going to be your finished width, so you can stop at any point and, you know, decide that that's the, the size that you want. But just make sure that if you decide to make it smaller, that when you um, decide to stop, that you end your last uh, stripe sequence with row 24 instead of row 27. Alright, so I have finished my last purple uh, stripe repeat up to row 24. And this is going to be our halfway point because now we're going to kind of start decreasing the shape to make it into a square. So if you count the rows, normally in between stripe sequences we have six rows of moss stitch right here. We've only done three, and that's because the next three are going to start our decrease section. So what we're going to do is chain two and turn just like normal, but instead of single crocheting in the same stitch, we're going to skip not only the stitch that the chain is coming out of, we're going to skip the first single crochet and work our first single crochet for this row into the first chain space. So then we're going to continue with our chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next chain space, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next chain space, all the way across to the last two stitches. But mainly um, the difference in the rest of the blanket is going to be the beginning and end of the rows. Um, because those beginnings and ends of the rows is what um, contains the decreased parts where we skip stitches instead of adding stitches. So that's what's going to be the main thing that changes. The stripe sequence is going to be the same. The rows are just a little different at the ends. So I'm going to keep doing my chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next chain space all the way across until I have two stitches left in my row. Alright, so I've made it down to the last two stitches. Instead of our normal chain one, skip one, and then work a single crochet and a half double crochet into that beginning chain space, we're not going to chain one. We're just going to skip one and then work a half double crochet into that beginning chain space. So that is creating our corner right there. And we are now going to begin, you know, repeating rows that do the same thing so that we will have a corner and a straight edge along both sides of our, our rows. So I'm just going to repeat the row we just did another two times to make our total of six um, moss stitch rows in between this sequence and the next one.
All right, so now we have finished our 30th row and we're going to start working row 31. So to do this, we are going to join our next contrast color, which is the Flamingo. And I'm gonna join this the same way I have done in all the rest of the previous stripes by pulling a new loop through and tugging on the gray yarn to make it smaller, make the loop smaller that was originally on the hook and then tie the tail together with the gray yarn. So we're going to need to carry the gray yarn across the row to the other side because we're going to be working again this single row of cluster stripe and we're going to need the gray yarn at the opposite edge so that we can come back and work the other direction with the gray. So I'm going to chain two and turn. I'm going to be working over the top of this gray yarn, crocheting over it. So I'm going to skip the next single crochet and work a cluster in the next chain space. Chain one, skip one, cluster in the next chain space. Chain one, skip one, cluster in the next chain space, all the way across until I have two stitches left. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, um, it's in the pattern though. Whenever you are working a row that involves carrying or crocheting over an unused strand of yarn, when you get to the end of the row, or periodically throughout the row, you're gonna need to give that row a little tug. Because what happens is as you work across, you know, it kind of shrinks up a little bit. And so if I were to get to the end of my row and then start working with the gray immediately, then I would have, you know, it would be tight and you wouldn't be able to, it wouldn't have as much stretch as the other rows. So what we're gonna do is as we go across every foot or so, or at the end of the row, you can do it all at once. You're just going to stretch the row that you just did and that will take some slack into the yarn that you carried so that it's not too tight and pulling on the width of your row. So that applies to all rows where we're carrying a color across. So again, I'm just gonna keep chain one, skip one, and cluster in the next chain space across until I get to the last two stitches. All right, so we've made it down to the last two stitches. We're going to skip the next stitch and half double crochet in the beginning chain space from the row below. Now, because this is um, a color change right here, we're going to switch back to the gray now. I'm just going to back up that last pull through with that loop and pick up the gray and pull it through. So now on the next stripe, we're going to be twisting the flamingo yarn together with the gray yarn whenever we come back to this edge so that it gets carried up the side of the work. So basically now what we're gonna do, um, I'm going to twist my yarns together to chain two so that it doesn't get um, loose on the edges, it'll be carried up the edge. And the next row is going to be a repeat of this row down here, which is our row 28. And what we're gonna do is every time we insert into a chain one space, we're going to also insert under that carried strand of yarn as we work across. So this is a repeat of row 28. Um, we're gonna do this a total of four times, so four rows. So this is row 32 to 35, repeating row 28. And on this first one, we're gonna be inserting under the carried strand. So I will show you what it looks like at the end of row 35. All right, so I have finished my four rows of repeating row 28. So now what I'm going to do is basically the same sequence that we were doing before with our stripes, but we're just going to be using, um, instead of repeating row three and row seven, you know, in the different um, orders, we're going to be repeating row 28 and 31. So basically what I'm going to do is just as we always do, we're going to do two more rows of moss stitch in our contrast color, which is my flamingo right now. So I'm going to do two rows of the row 28. Then I'm going to join white and work row 31, carrying my contrast color across. Then I'm gonna to switch to the contrast color 
and as I work, um, I'm going to work row 28 two more times, and as I work it the first time, I'm always going to insert under that carried strand of yarn as I go under um, each chain space, just as we always do when we've carried a strand of yarn. And so I'm going to have um, those two rows of row 28, then I'm going to switch back to my gray and do four rows of row 28. Then I'm going to go back to my flamingo and repeat row 31 again. And then I'm going to go back to the gray again and repeat row 28 a total of six times. So that's going to be our full repeat for this set, for this color. And of course, as always, when we carry a yarn across a row, we're going to stretch it first before we um, change back to that color to make sure that it's not too tight or you know strung across there too tight and of course we're always twisting the yarns together at the edge to make sure that they are not hanging loose and carry them up the edge of the work and as you can see we're starting to get our corner here so this is going to be the next edge so i'm going to finish my stripe repeat with the flamingo and then we'll just keep going in the, the following colors all right, so that is my first um, stripe sequence repeat with um, the flamingo as the contrast color. So now I'm going to switch to lemon as the contrast color and repeat that section again. And then, you know, as we've done before, we're going to switch to the minty, repeat the stripe sequence again, switch to the Aruba C, repeat it again, switch to orchid and repeat it again. And then we're going to start over and do um, another stripe sequence with the flamingo, another with the lemon, another with the minty, another with the aruba sea, and then on the final one with the orchid, we're only going to repeat rows 31 to 49. And we're going to leave the last two rows of our stripe sequence off because they're going to be a little bit different because we'll be down at the very point, the very corner, and we'll have to, you know, do the rows at the very tip a little bit differently. But I'm just going to um, continue repeating that stripe sequence again and again and again, switching to the next color every time. All right, so we are down to the very, very corner of our afghan. This is almost to the end. We just need to make the little point on the corner here. And I have worked the um, last stripe sequence here. But as the pattern states, we only work up to row 49, which means we leave off the last two rows of gray here because we're going to finish them off with um, kind of a little a couple very short rows that make the little point and they're not going to be exactly the same as the row that we've been repeating this whole time so we're going to chain two we're going to skip the first stitch single crochet in the next chain space chain one skip one single crochet in the next chain, chain space and then we're going to skip one and half double crochet in the top of that beginning chain space from the row below now for the next row we're going to chain two and turn then we're going to skip one single crochet in the next chain space skip one and then half double crochet in the top of the beginning chain space from the row below. So for our next row, we're going to chain one, and then we're going to kind of work a single crochet two together. And we're going to skip the first stitch, insert into the chain space, pull up a loop, skip the next stitch, insert into the chain two space from the beginning of the row, pull up a loop, and then pull through all three loops on the hook. So that is going to create our little corner. So I'm not going to tie off here because we are going to work a little single crochet border around the edge of our afghan. But what we need to do next is weave in all the ends. Now, a lot of times when you do a border, you can just crochet over all these tails. However, there are quite a lot of tails in this afghan because there are so many stripes. So I have probably about 85 tails to weave in before I start my border because I don't want to just have bulk and bulk and bulk just building up under my um, my border crochet, my single crochet, because if I have too many tails to crochet over at once, then it will show through. So what we're going to do 
is I'm going to show you a method to weave in these ends that is relatively easy and quick and buries them in such a way that they're not visible. So it will leave us with um, a border that doesn't have all those colored tails showing through, but they also won't be showing through in the fabric either. So I'm going to get out a bent tipped tapestry needle. If you like a straight tip, then that's entirely up to you, but I'm gonna use a bent one. And you just wanna make sure that the eye is big enough for your yarn. So for every one of these tails, um, you can see how that the moss stitch kind of stair steps. So we're going to weave in each of these tails as if we had crocheted over it and then gone back through. You remember how um, when we would go back through on a road that we had just crocheted over a tail to carry it across and then on the next row we would go underneath that tail that was carried and crochet over it again as we went into the chain spaces. So that's kind of how we're going to weave in our ends. Now all of the stripes begin and end on cluster stitch rows. So that's where we're going to be weaving in the tails. So I'm going to take this white tail right here and thread it onto my yarn needle. And then we're going to kind of follow the white stripe. So I'm gonna kind of insert it in here up the side of the beginning chain space. And then I'm going to go down through that cluster stitch and then back up underneath the blue stitch that was worked into that chain space. So and then we come through the cluster stitch again and then up underneath the blue stitch that was worked into the chain space. So that's pretty much how I'm going to weave in all of the tails. And I like to do this in a way where I can just kind of wiggle the yarn needle through as I go along. And as you can see, the yarn tail is completely invisible, and because it's going in and out of more than one row, it's also going to be more secure than if we just wove it into a single row. Because we are kind of going up and catching some of the stitches in the row above it, like so. And then we just kind of give it a little stretch. It will stay pretty secure in there, and then just trim the little fuzzy tail off the surface. So I'm not going to tie off over here at my corner. I'm going to leave that alone. What I am going to do is take the hook out and I'm going to add a stitch marker to the loop so that it does not come undone. So for holding a loop on the crochet project, I like to use the locking type. If you don't have one of these, you can use a safety pin and it will work just fine. So that will keep that loop from unraveling while I turn the blanket every which way to weave in all these tails. So I'm going to weave in all the rest of my tails into the cluster stitch rows because they all come out of cluster stitch rows. And then I will show you how I'm going to do the border. All right, so all of my ends are woven in. And at this point, the edges look relatively neat, but we're still going to put a border on it anyway because I would rather not see all of this type of thing on the edge because that's where we carried the yarn and um, I, th I just want the completely neat finished look of a little border. So what we're gonna do is take the stitch marker out of this loop that we had been saving and insert our crochet hook. So what we're gonna do here first is work our corner. So I'm going to, I'm not going to chain, we're going to do something that's kind of like what I do for my invisible um, slip stitch with the chainless starting stitches. So we're not going to chain, we're just going to insert into that corner and work a single crochet, then another single crochet and a third single crochet, all in that space. And then we're just going to start single crocheting evenly across the edge. Now when I do this in moss stitch, I like to work a single crochet 
in the end of each row that ends with a half double crochet. So here's the half double crochet. I'm going to work one single crochet in the end of that row and then one single crochet in each of the two chains from the next row's beginning chain space. So the first row I worked into was one that ends with a half double crochet on this edge and the next one is going to be a row that begins with a chain two. So I'm going to work into each of those two chains. And exactly how you do this is not super critical as long as you are working across the edge evenly, your edge is not pulling together um, and tightening up, but it's also not ruffling. You just want an edge that lays flat. And the main purpose of this is to cover the, uh, the edges where we carried yarn. So I'm going to just keep single crocheting evenly along the edge until I get to the next corner. All right, so I am almost to the corner. I just have a couple stitches left. And when I get to that corner, we're gonna do kind of the same thing we did before and put three single crochets into that corner to kind of make it, you know, turn and work, be able to work down the next side. So I'm gonna continue single crocheting evenly across the next edge. Then I'm gonna put three single crochet in the next corner I'm going to work evenly across the next edge, put three single crochet in the next corner, and then work evenly across the next edge till I get back to the corner that I started with. And that will be the finished first row of our border, and I'll show you how to join it. All right, so I've made it all the way back around. As you can see, this right here is my little cluster of three single crochets into that corner. So I'm going to do this little kind of invisible slip stitch, just like I have in my invisible slip stitch video. So I'm going to stretch the loop on the hook and take the hook out. Then I'm going to insert my hook into that first stitch. It is a little tight because it was a chainless one. Um, from back to front, like so. I'm going to put the loop back on the hook and pull it through from front to back. And that is our invisible slip stitch. That keeps the stitch from being visible. It gives a pretty much seamless join at the end of the round. So what we're going to do is stretch the loop a little bit, insert into the same stitch, and work a single crochet. Then this next stitch is the center stitch of that three stitch cluster in the corner. It's not actually a cluster stitch, but there's three stitches in that corner. This is the one in the center, so we're going to work three single crochets into that stitch. And then we're just going to single crochet in each stitch across until we get all the way to the next corner. And this corner also has three single crochets in that corner spot. So we're going to work three single crochets into the one in the center of that three single crochet from the previous row. Then again, single crochet in each stitch across the next side, three single crochets in the corner, single crochet across the next side, three single crochets in the corner, and then we'll single crochet all the way back up to where we started and join with the invisible slip stitch again. All right, so I made it back around to where I started and I'm going to join this now with the invisible slip stitch. So again, I'm going to pull on the loop till it's much longer than it would normally be and take the hook out. I'm going to insert into that first stitch from back to front, bring the loop around and catch it with the hook and pull it through from front to back. So now when I cut my yarn, I can now tie off as normal and the front edge of that, the front looks totally seamless. The top looks almost completely seamless. You, you can hardly tell it's even there. And then the tie-off knot lays very neat and tight and flat against the back of the work. So I can now weave in this tail. So now all that's left to do is attach the tassels at the four corners and block the afghan. You can see that the edge is just a little bit wiggly because it has not been blocked yet. Blocking that will help even that out and make it just lay perfectly smooth and straight and flat. But first we're going to attach our tassel. So 
I have made these tassels in a previous video. You can see the link in the description box to learn how to do this. And they have these two strings that come off of the top. And it's kind of hard to see from here, but there's also a string that runs across the top right here that holds the top part together. So I'm going to take both of these strands and put them through my yarn needle. And then I'm going to bring the needle through that center single crochet in the corner and pull it through. Then I'm going to catch this strand of yarn that runs around through the middle at the top that holds the tassel together and then come through that same stitch again. And you want this to be relatively tight and secure. We want it to dangle, but we don't want it to just flop and fall around, fall off. So I'm going to take a couple more stitches through that same strand that's holding it together and the stitch that I'm attaching it to. Then I'm going to bring the needle to the back. I'm going to take one strand out of the yarn needle and bring it over just a little bit in the fabric so that I can tie these two strands together in a double knot and weave them in in opposite directions. Now the reason I'm going to do this is because I don't want to take two strands here and add a whole bunch of bulk to one side or the other of this border. So what I'm going to do is take one strand, weave it up this side of the border, and one strand up the other side. So I'm just going to weave this in, and then when I'm done with that, I can just trim this tail. So I'm going to weave this one in up through this side. And I am purposely weaving it into the second round of the border, because the first round is covering up all of the... Um, places where we carried yarn up the edges of the work. So I'm just going to make sure that this one stays within the outer round of our border just to not add too much bulk or make it peek through in the first round. All right, so that is our finished afghan. Now all we need to do to it is block it or if you prefer, if you're using a yarn that is machine washable like this one, you can just wash it and dry it, and that will give a similar effect. But I'm going to go ahead and steam block this one, and then I'll show you what it looks like. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you make this project, let me know how it turns out for you in the comments below, and post your photos with the hashtag watercolor skies afghan let me know what you think of this project in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos thanks for watching